This is the Brisbane Lions Fancast with Dom Fay and Michael White. Yes, back after oh, what do you mean, about a month off, Mike, since we last sat together. Special edition, to Dom. Yeah. Again. Yeah, no, we're back uh, for trades, off-season and all that. Before we get into it, though, Mike, and there's plenty to get into, enjoyed your month off? Well, M- month uh, off. off the, off the fan cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. No, well, I don't know. I miss not doing the fan cast, but um, <laughs> there's not... My favourite question from uh, mates or people that know me is, what do you do in your off-season? <laughs> I just laugh at it. There is no off-season, yeah. is there? <laughs> A day or two after the grand final finished, and uh, which I was lucky enough to go down to, to to help cover for work we're rolling into trade rumors and mm. even in the lead up to that obviously things were things were rolling so yeah not much not much of a break that's for sure is both there? of your clubs finish their seasons the lines and the suns that you cover and then in the month following that you've had what dane beams request to trade to brisbane you've had the gold coast suns sack their coach you've had everything going on yeah we have a bit sort of roles reversed from last year a yeah. little bit, wasn't it when um, yeah. brisbane had just um, appointed Justin Lepich, I think it was around the grand final time, and, mm. and this time last year the shoe was on the other foot with the Lions players wanting out. But this time it seems like uh, Beams wants to come in, so it's a um, shoe's on the other foot this year. But it's uh, mm. very interesting. There is a lot to get through at the moment, and look, we're recording this on uh, late on Tuesday afternoon. I imagine it will be going up sometime Wednesday. Um, and, We've got to put the precursor yeah. this week, don't we? Even more so than normal. <laughs> we absolutely have to because the way things are moving at the moment, the situation could have rapidly changed by the time this goes gets put on the Lions website. If so, the next 10 or 15 minutes could be entertaining listening. Or just as likely, we could be still sitting here in a week's time with nothing changed. That's completely true. <laughs> so that, that, that's just the nature of the it trade is. period. Um, first thing we should touch on is the probably the, the big story. It's Dane Beams. It's been pottering on for a week or two now since Collingwood released that statement saying he wanted to come to to Queensland. Now, when that came out, I would say it didn't take... It probably shocked a lot of people the definitive nature of it, but there had been murmurs about this for some time. We chatted about it on our last show. This has been in the works for, well, I don't know how long, but a, a, a fair period of time. Yeah, you're right. And I think your first comment was spot on. It was just the definitive nature of it. These things don't... They're not often... Excuse I'm, there's a pun coming up here. It's not often as black and white as uh, <laughs> as what this has been made out to be, is it? But Beams to say he wants to come to Queensland and in brackets that's wanting to come to the Brisbane Lions mm. um, was quite definitive and obviously it gave both clubs a chance to start the process early. But uh, as we speak, we're at a bit of an impasse at the moment with Brisbane not wanting to give up anything more than picks and Collingwood not wanting to accept anything less than a, an established player. So we're at a little bit of an impasse at the moment. And uh, I, at the as we talk right now, I still think it'll get done. Um, there's a bit of work to to get uh, to make that happen, though. But I still think Beams will end up in Brisbane um, ahead of next season. There's been a lot of talk coming out of Collingwood that because of the, I guess, the stalemate between Brisbane and the Pies, that that perhaps Gold Coast could be a player and and come into it. Now you know Gold Coast as well as anyone. My gut feel would be, especially after signing Melcheski, they're not they're not going to be players unless it completely falls apart to the point that. It's just them, and they'll, they'll look at it then. But apart from that, I don't think they're going to be involved. Would you say that's fair? Yeah, you're spot on. Like they'll be there to pick up the pieces, essentially. And in all honesty, I think it's a very, very last resort for Gold Coast. I mean, they know he's a great player, and obviously they'd love to have him on their list. But you've touched on Nick Malcheski signing that puts another hole in the salary cap. And to be honest, they don't have a whole lot of flexibility in the salary cap. They've got to resign. Gary Ablett's contract expires at the end of 2015, so they need to. They'll be in the process of renewing that for future years, and um, they, they've got a lot to take care of. Uh, and if Dane Beams falls in their lap, well and good, but they I don't think they're actively pursuing him. No, so it seems to be. It's at the moment. It's uh, as far as Queensland teams go, and as far as any teams go, I think it's Brisbane Lions or, or bust at the moment. And Collingwood have given the Lions a deadline of 5 p.m. this Friday. Now, it's interesting, that isn't it? It is it's a funny bit. that they've put a deadline on this. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's the Brisbane Lions deadline. I don't think they'll be um, stopping at 5 p.m. Friday if it's not done. You wouldn't think so. You've heard things like this happen in previous you know, trade periods, and sometimes it has ended there, sometimes it has continued going. But it is clear that, I guess the, definitely the priority of Collingwood, and you'd imagine the priority of Brisbane too, is to get this trade done as soon as possible. To me, the one that made the most sense, and I'm not sure if it's going to pan out, is that Levi Greenwood yeah. from North Melbourne wants to go to Collingwood. Uh, and I heard a theory thrown up this morning, which I would sort of thought of uh, myself about a, a 24 hours ago once I heard he, he was linked, was uh, Brisbane giving up their first two 
uh, round draft picks. Pick five, as it is now, goes to Collingwood, and Levi Greenwood goes to Collingwood. Yep. Beams comes to Brisbane, and North Melbourne gets picked. I think Brisbane's second round pick 24 or 25 and maybe Collingwood's second round pick or something along those lines. Yep. There's a bit to fiddle around with there because obviously North Melbourne might not want to lose Levi Greenwood so easily and, and, and just accept the second round picks. But I think I think what we're seeing here is just both of our theories there that a, a third team's likely to have to be involved, aren't they? Well, that's it because, I mean, uh, I think it was Peter Schwab himself who actually came out on trade radio early in the week and said that the, the players who Collingwood had, had mentioned were Aish, May, Zorko and Hanley. Now, <laughs> I, I think Mark Robinson said something on AFL 360 towards the end of, of their season, which is that he wouldn't trade Pierce Hanley for Dane Beams, let alone pick five and, or pick four <laughs> as it was at the time. And, and Pierce Hanley, and I'm completely completely with him on that. I mean, yes, you might think these are like-for-like like plays in some regards, but there's a massive difference in that Beams wants to leave. I think that's the thing, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> and, and let's be honest, like if you're Collingwood, if the roles were reversed, Brisbane would be doing the same. Oh, of course. course. You, shoot, you shoot for the stars and work your way back from there. So they'd be crazy not to, and they're losing uh, their second most important player, arguably, behind Scott Pendlebury. So you don't want to watch your second most important player walk out of the club and 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 you know, just get a draft pick, although an elite one at number five in, in return, because it's a big hole in your system for the next couple of years. But unfortunately, what you said there is spot on. Dane Beams wants to leave, and he does have a year on his contract, so they can they can hold him to an extent. But do, oh, I always think, do you really yeah. want someone playing for your club that doesn't want to be there? Especially just... after he snubbed the best and fairest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a. It, I almost think that that's. Uh, that's an oh, an unsalvageable situation there. Now. I think so too, and I just think it's Collingwood probably f- trying to flex their muscles a bit. I mean, they they don't want to see a player go to the Brisbane Lions, mm. you know, crappy little Brisbane up up, <laughs> up in the northern states that Eddie has so much love for. Anyway, I mean, that's not a great look if they come off second best in that trade. So I understand Collingwood flexing their muscles, but I think ultimately they might just have to take a little bit of a hit here. You don't want Dane Beams not wanting to be at the club and infiltrating the the camp with his bad vibes mm. come pre-season next year if he sticks around which he's ob- which you know he'd be an unhappy player at the club you don't of want of course that. but w- you would agree with me then that the players and Redden was being thrown in that mix too which Justin Leipich has shut let's down let's just tick another name off every day yes. Dom because uh, Brisbane don't want to trade players yeah. end of story those ones aren't going no if there's a player who will be involved in this trade and I'd say that seems very unlikely it'll be more of a fringe player perhaps a Jack Crisp who's still unsigned he's at the about, I think as far as we, he's the only one unsigned and I mm. haven't heard his name um, and in fairness I haven't directly put it to the club either but I'd I, I'm not even sure if that. I mean, that wouldn't get the job done. I don't oh, think yeah. at this stage. No. So, but you, yeah, no players involved. So it's picks or a third party, which seems to be the more likely scenario. Uh, but I feel like in all this talk about how it's going to get done, people have forgotten the idea of it getting done for a moment. And I just like to think for a moment. Imagine how exciting it would be to have a player like Dane Beams at the club next year. Instantly, yeah, yeah. instantly, the club would have to at least finals is at least a possibility. I, I still think it's a long stretch, yes, but obviously yes. it's a bit closer than it would be without him. But yeah. um, he offers something different to what Brisbane has at the moment. Brisbane's got a very good midfield. They've got a Pierce Hanley who can run and carry and a great ball user and Tom Rockliffe, who we know is such a great accumulator and uh, finder of the football and distributor and Jack Redden, probably in a, in a similar mould and a little bit tougher in the midfield and Zorko who likes to run and bounce. But Beams is that uh, midfielder that can just that go can go forward and kick goals mm. and Brisbane doesn't really have maybe Dane Zorko to an extent but Beam's got a bit more polish um, can play genuinely play a good half forward role and can play inside and outside so really something different to what Brisbane doesn't have at the moment be yeah. an amazing get yeah it really would be um, one of the best gets in Brisbane's trade history mm. really if it does go through a lot to play out there but y- my gut feel is that it's going to happen in so, one way or another so it'll happen I, I think it'll happen as well yeah so we, we'll monitor that one we will I imagine be back next week perhaps chatting with Dane Beams wouldn't that be fun that'd be Just fun put that idea out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, it might not even be done by this time next week <laughs> yeah absolutely. if Colling would have their way well, anyway let's, <laughs> we could talk about this for all day um, <laughs> there's two other trade things that look Daniel Merritt was flagged a little while ago the club shut it down to you uh, I know that you had was it Dean Warren who, it was, who shut yeah, it down yeah, yeah. yeah it was Dean who wasn't wasn't overly impressed with the article that <laughs> not my article the article that I guess originally sort of mm. prompted the rebuttal which said that Merritt was was looking to leave so um, uh, now it turns out that there may have been some truth there after all. <laughs> it's interesting the way things have panned out yeah isn't it? just a little bit um, so just a little bit I still I, don't think the club 
necessarily... It's a difficult one, this one. They don't want to get rid of Dan Merritt or Joel Patful, but I think in both instances, they're, they're open to it, aren't they? <laughs> well, the thing is that they, I guess they know now that these two players, as great as they have been for the club, and we'll touch on Patful in a minute, but as great as they have been for the club, they are not going to be there for our next premiership. Unless, no, no, unless no. by some fluke next year's or the year That's after right. the premiership year, yep. they're not going to be there. And as tough as it will be to lose them in the short term, you know, if if they want to leave and, you know, if, if you know, if they really do want to be somewhere else as Joel Patful does, he, he, you know, he does want to live in Sydney at some stage in his life, whether that's next year or post-career, you, you wouldn't begrudge the club by doing the right thing by him. And I don't think it would honestly, in the long term, hurt us that severely. No, I think in this instance, it's those players, and you mentioned there, um, Joel wanting to live in Sydney at some stage, whether it's post-career, and he's just said, if if you can facilitate something, that's he, he's, he's open to it. And mm. both players are open to it. It's not the club, I guess, shopping these players around. It's these players sort of putting their head up and saying, hey, if you can find something, like I'm, we're open to it. But I don't think the club will... Club certainly won't give them away for nothing. They'll want something, they'll want something in return. But you're right. I mean, just, just because they're not going to play in the next uh, premiership team or the next team contending for premiership doesn't mean they don't have value for the Lions right now. I think there's a li- there's a there's a big balancing act there, isn't there? I think just the I guess the experience or the inexperience of the back line is um, a major consideration mm. here. Matt Maguire has been re-signed since we last spoke, so we know. He's around. He's a year-to-year proposition. Uh, Jed Adcock's still there. Not a key defender, but just experience-wise. So you've got a couple of older heads down there. I don't think you'd want to lose both of Merritt and Patful. Yeah, today. and that, that's the concern. If they do both go, um, assuming that Staker will take some time to work his way into the team, Goose Maguire is going to be the only 30-plus player there. The next oldest will be Jed Adcock. And then, it's a big yeah, fall you're off, talking about it? Hanley and Lewenberger are then your next tier of, in terms of age. Yeah, and if you're looking at that back half, and we know about te- all teams these days have sort of got their forward leaders and their backline leaders, and they like to marshal, and, and obviously Jed's the captain of the the team and of the club, so he can do that from the back half. But it's nice to have another cool head down there. You've mm. got Justin Clark and Darcy Gardner and possibly Dan McStay playing a few games, and and Ryan Harwood, who's still quite young. But there's a very, very young call back there. I think you'd still want another experienced guy too. But if the Lions can get something worthwhile in return, they'll look at it. Um, otherwise, I think they'll be... I mean, they're more than happy to keep those players. Well, I'll, I'm going to put you on the spot, Mike. Percentage... I do this a lot on the fan cast yeah. with no warning. <laughs> it's part of the fun. Uh, Percentage-wise, how far out the door is Joel Patful? Oh, I think he's more likely, to be honest. Just because I think, the, I think that GWS... And to a lesser extent, Sydney might be a little more proactive. Yep. Um, there, I guess there's a bit there. There, are, there may be a bit more of a need for a Joel Patful, GWS. They they'll see the value in a young guy and in, in an older guy helping young guys mm. out. So they might be a bit more proactive. And I only think it's um, what they can offer Brisbane is is a bit more than what other clubs may be able to offer in exchange for Daniel Merritt. So I think he's mm. a bit more likely. But I, it's still. Uh, I I'm just I just want to sit on the fence, Dom. <laughs> well, <look laughs> because at, as we speak, I don't know yeah. t- to the contrary, to be honest. I still want to sit on the fence with that, but I w- would not be shocked at all. I'd be a little more surprised if Dan Merritt went, just because I don't know what the other clubs can that are interested can offer Brisbane coming back the other way. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with that one. And and I think if Patful were to leave to the Giants, personally there's been a lot there's been a lot of talk that it would be a second round pick or something along those mm. lines coming back. That's what that's what I'm yeah. hearing and thinking. Yeah. Um I would be asking the question about a few of their fringe young players, mm. to be honest, because you, they're, they're very, like the Gold Coast, they're in a bit of a unique situation that they had so many high draft picks, they're not all going to fit into the best 22. You and, can, we, and we see a couple of them wanting out already, exactly. don't we? Yeah. And you can pick one of them up for, for possibly unders. Now, I mean, there's a few players who've come up. Uh, McCarthy's a player who was a, mm. a key forward they got last year in the draft. I think pick 14. Uh, yeah, played a game. Memory. Maybe the last game only. Yeah, kicked a great think, goal in yeah, it. Um, yeah. Now, potentially he's one we could ask the you know ask about. If you could wrangle that a first or second year yeah. key tall in exchange for a you know a, a 10 year uh, sort of medium sized defender, that's something you'd obviously entertain with, isn't it? So there's, there's a few options there and I mean I, I would not at all be against I guess at least looking at it because it's a situation where Joel wants to like would would be open to the idea of moving yeah, and to Sydney so, let's, and, and we also know that he's 
Joel's more than more than happy in Brisbane. Oh yeah, and more than happy to stay here. I guess yeah. he's just looking at life beyond footy, and exactly. And if the option comes up, he's happy to sort of sneak down there a year or two early. Yeah. So there's a there's a bit playing uh, on behind the scenes apart from just Beams at the moment. And in fact, one of those a uh, Pat Flora merit trade could even happen before Beams goes through. Yeah, you're right. That's Outs- right. Outside of those three instances though do you think that's there's, there's nothing else hidden mm, nothing else we don't know about not that i know of that's for sure <laughs> and there's a lot of other journalists uh i guess sniffing around and trying to <laughs> trying mm. to find that out as well and nothing's come up as yet so um anything else would be a bit of a surprise at this stage once um patty Ryder, i guess was the other name that was up um up for grabs i guess last time we were doing mm. this show but that got shot uh, shut down and probably uh, maybe 10, or, 10 or 12 days ago with him choosing yeah. Port Adelaide well considering what Essendon are asking for him <laughs> I think it's probably lucky that got shut down because when we were sitting here we were thinking because of you know a, a bit of compassion it was going to be a second round pick and that everyone would be happy that's not how it's turned out I think last I heard they were asking for Hamish Hartlett they like, so. to, they like to play hardball I think that's a generous <laughs> term isn't it the old bombers <laughs> yeah uh, well, one other thing to touch on just before we move on to a chat with Josh Clayton who was selected as a father son uh uh, pick. We should touch on the training base. Um, now, there was a slight update uh, last Friday from the board about where this situation was at. If you haven't checked it, you should get on the mm. website and on the Lions website and have a look, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and this has been reported in various areas of the media. And um, I, I don't think I'm going out on a limb too much by saying that the odds of the QSAC facility at Nathan seem to be shortening by the day. Um, I, 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 yeah, I, I tend to agree. I yeah. think early, the early, uh, if you're a bookmaker, that'd be the early favourite. <laughs> yeah, and Springfield is, well, the club wouldn't say this, but it, it is, it is lengthening by the day. It is. It is the all club's hand. I, take my hat off to the club, and obviously this is going on the Lions website, but, <laughs> yes. but we're not obliged to say anything on on this show. But mm. um, I think they've handled it really well since Greg Swan's come in as the as the new chief executive. There's a fresh set of eyes. They've gone and explored that Springfield option, realised that, and they said that in this statement, is that at the time when it was chosen, it was the only, I think it was referred to as the only AAA facility that mm. was available. But there's a huge hole in funding, and obviously once the federal government funding was uh, withdrawn, if that's the right term, once a new government came in, um, there was a massive hole. So there's just a big discrepancy there. It's a huge, huge financial investment at Springfield. And while it's a great proposal, there's a huge shortfall in money. So it's not quite the, it doesn't appear to be the best option anymore. So I think they've handled it really well and yeah, they've absolutely. gone out and explored it again and had a look. And, and while it's still an option, it's Gee, it's hard to come up with that amount of cash. And it was, I mean, there, there are logistical issues. It is quite far away. This is all common knowledge. But they were being overlooked because of how much of a, a great decision it seemed financially. As soon as that is taken away, yep. the other flaws are, I guess, highlighted. And suddenly it doesn't seem as good as QSAC, which is, you know, less than 15 minutes drive from the Gabba. Um, so it's still a bit to play out there. Yeah, and I bit, don't I think, think there's so, a decision yeah. that's been made and we just don't know yet. I, I genuinely think it is still up in the air. Well, so do I. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I think we'll probably have a decision by, uh, at a guess before they go on the Christmas break. I'm nervous to put a time frame on, but I reckon that's a pretty, I reckon it's a pretty safe bet. Yeah. yeah there's yeah. a bit, there's a bit to look through yet, but I think that'd be a safe bet. Yeah. You'd hope that then they could start getting stuck into, uh, setting whatever the facility was going to be up. Um, so we'll monitor that one as it goes along and maybe even get Greg Swan on the show in the coming weeks to Come on, chat about it, which would be good fun. <laughs> uh, after this, though, we're going to be joined by Josh Clayton, who was selected by the club as a father-son pick. We'll be joined by him after this. The best way to keep track of everything Lions is to head to lions.com.au. It's the first place to find the latest Lions news and videos, get the lowdown on upcoming games, results and player stats. There's also great ways to interact with live chats, downloads and Player of the Year voting updates. And with the social media hub, you can connect with all the Lions social media activity. Lions.com.au. Everything Lions, all in one place. He is the first father-son selection by the club since Jonathan Brown in uh, 1999. Josh Clayton joins us on the line. Welcome to the show, Josh. Thanks for having me, guys. Now, this has obviously been some time in the making, uh, what happened on Monday morning when you were uh, officially, uh, essentially selected by the club. Can you just explain the, the emotions, I guess, of the, the week so far since that all officially went through? Um, yeah, it's been pretty surreal, I guess. Um, I've always kind of gone for the Brisbane Lions. So, yeah, definitely, definitely when I heard on Monday morning that I'd ended up at the club, I was very happy and it's a very humbling feeling, I guess. 
Josh, can you tell us how much um, dialogue you have with the club through the year, and and when you get a, you know, when you get a sense that they're going to select you, or, or when they in fact told you that they're going to bid on you and and select you? Um, well, the first kind of real real chats I started having with the club was um, prior to the season when I um, spent some time up in Brisbane with the academy boys in um, early December, then again in um, early January in 2014. So that was probably the first time. Um, I started really speaking to the club and then throughout the year I'd get a text every now and then how I was going or um, just just uh, what they thought of my games personally. But um, I think the real key indication I got of when they were going to take me was probably uh, three quarters way through the season um, when my first, my first actual meeting with the Brisbane recruiters happened. They just kind of came over and told me that they were nominating me and I'd um, didn't really expect it, so yeah, it was it was a really good feeling, and I'm um, happy to happy to finally be at the club. So I guess, despite growing up always knowing that that you were eligible as a father son selection, uh, you you only really first heard from the club late last year. Um, yeah, it was kind of it was a kind of a weird process. Um, my first um, national carnival under 16s for Vic Metro, I broke my wrist before the carnival, so I couldn't actually play in it. Um, which was pretty disappointing, but um, I think I think I might have got a call from from the club, um, the the academy boys that is, um, when I was 16, and that kind of that kind of started things off. But um, really only really only took off late um, late last year, like I said, and early this year. And of course, your dad, Scotty Scotty Clayton, who's the uh, Gold Coast list manager now. Do you, how, how much does um, how much I guess uh, interaction have you had with him over the journey, and um, I guess w- what's he sort of said to you since that uh, selection went down on Monday? Uh, it was kind of a funny experience to be in, I guess. Um, as a as a younger kid, seeing that dad was always away, um, he didn't really see much of my younger years playing. Maybe if I was lucky five or six games a year, but um, certainly in the last uh, two or three years, um, he's seen a lot more of me and he kind of just gives me regular feedback and tells me what I'm doing right, doing wrong and what I need to improve on. So yeah, from from that point of view, it's been really helpful and um, definitely glad to have someone in the family that's um, in the business and um, knows knows the tricks of the trade in the AFL, I guess. So yeah, that's been really good. Um, yeah, probably the family's just Really, really happy for me at this point for going to the Lions. Obviously, um, Dad had a bit to do with them in the late 90s. And, um, yeah, so it's been really good. Were you a little bit hurt your dad didn't put a bid on you for the Suns on Monday morning? Uh, No, not at all. (laughs) Um, (laughs) A lot of people have asked that, but no, not at all. So uh, I've, I've read that you have been a Lions fan your whole life. I mean, we don't, obviously, because the Lions are somewhat a newer club and uh, the majority of the, the support, or sorry, the, the young AFL talent does come from the traditional football states as opposed to up in, in Queensland. We don't get a lot of Lions supporters joining the club. Is it a, a really exciting experience, I guess, to join the club that you've grown up barracking for and to, you know, be mentored by, you know, I, I imagine one of your coaches next year is going to be Simon Black and, and players like that? Oh, yeah, definitely. Growing up... Um all my favourite players, Luke Power, Simon Black, Jonathan Brown, Justin Leppage, who is now the coach. So yeah, it's, it's really surreal. And um, even when I was even when I was up there earlier this year, just being around the club and soaking in the atmosphere was really great. And it's it's just funny now that I've ended up there. Really, quite a few of the players are probably on holidays and whatnot at the moment, Josh. But have you had contact from um, any of the playing group at this stage? Uh, yeah, I've got a got a couple of messages. Um, Tommy Rockliffe sent me a message. Sent me a message on Monday, um, Dan McStay as well, and uh, just today I got a message from Sam Mays, which is really good. So you have grown up, obviously, supporting the club, but you've you've spent the majority of your your years, I suppose, down in Victoria. So are you a little bit daunted by the move up north, or, or are you just very keen to, to get into it later in the year? Um, more, more just excited about the experience and really looking forward to getting into it, so... Yeah, like obviously I've uh, pretty much grown up in Melbourne my whole life, so it will be sad to move. But um, like you can't you can't really complain moving states to play a job you've always wanted to do, and for the club you've you've barracked for growing up. So I can't really complain to be honest, and really looking forward to it. Just before we came on air here, Josh, you were telling us that you're still to finish schooling. How's that gonna? How are you gonna juggle the I guess the the last month of your schooling and then transition straight into AFL footy? 
Um, yeah, it's definitely a lot of a lot of pressure off my schooling at the moment, <laughs> knowing that I've actually um, <laughs> made an AFL club. So, uh, so it might be hard at times to uh, just keep concentrating on school and the final exams and stuff coming up. But um, yeah, just kind of take it one step at a time and get my exams over and done with, so I can jump straight in the footy. Uh, there's uh, another player who was eligible to be taken by the club, uh, Tyler Roos, Paul Roos, son, who you've played a fair bit of footy with. That didn't end up going ahead, but, you know, obviously he's now uh, waiting to see if he'll get his chance in the, the draft or the rookie draft. Have you been in contact much with him since you got picked up by the club? Um, yeah, it's kind of funny. Uh, me and Tyler didn't really have much to do with each other before this year, but he, when he moved to Melbourne, he actually moved um, around probably a... 100 metre walk from my house so um, <laughs> we've actually had a fair bit to do with each other and we're really good mates now so it's kind of it's kind of disappointing in the way that um, he didn't get nominated but you never know he could still end up at the club and he's been really happy for me and supportive so I can't really fold him on that and he's, he's a great kid and I hope to get I hope he too gets his opportunity to play AFL for you. And just one more before we wrap it up, uh, Josh, your dad's jersey number 40 that he played for uh, at his time with Fitzroy is free at the moment. Any chance he'll ask for your dad's old number? Nah, no way, mate. <laughs> um, <laughs> not, not that I think it's too high a number or anything. I'm not, I'm not that type of kid, but um, probably probably just a better thing to get my own number and kind of start start my own start my own stuff going on the lines rather than live in, live in the footsteps of dad and have that number. So although it's kind of funny that that number's um, <laughs> available, I don't think, unless it's forced upon me, that I'll be taking that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much for joining us on the show today, Josh. Uh, all the best with the coming months, and we look forward to you uh, coming up and joining the club in November. No worries. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Depending on how the next week unfolds for the Lions, we will likely be back next week with another episode of the fan cast we'll just see how that plays out in the meantime maybe chatting as i said earlier to dane beams wouldn't that just i'm just <laughs> gonna flag that again because if that goes through uh would love to get him on we'll be putting our hand up yeah absolutely um but mike there's a, a lot to play out and you know it can happen in trade periods that things come out of the blue and very unpredicted and suddenly you know a player can can move clubs or join a club within 24 hours that you'd never have thought would happen beforehand. I'd imagine that was the case with Joel Patful. No one would have even imagined he was likely to leave beforehand. So it could be a turbulent week ahead. And so that's why we're not going to say we're definitely coming back. We'll wait and see how it yeah, goes. Yeah, well, that's right. Or it could be it could be very quiet as well. Yeah. We often know that these the deals, even though they've been in the pipeline, there's a lot of negotiating, toing and froing. Don't get done. And despite Collingwood's deadline, sometimes these things don't get done until the last 24 or 48 hours, so I guess we'll just see how that plays out. But it was sort of occurring, not just to me, but I'm sure most Lions fans, on Monday once the um, academy bidding process uh, was completed and the Lions took Liam Dawson and Harris Andrews with their third and fourth round pick, that the Lions might not have any active picks in the, tra- <laughs> in the draft <laughs> yeah. this year if they yep. have to give up their first and second round to get Dane Beam. So I'm very interested in that one. All the hard work of the recruiting staff that go and watch all those junior games might be for absolutely squat. Yeah, well, I mean, I was I was intending on heading down the Gold Coast for the draft this year, but I'm not sure there'll be a lot of uh, a lot of purpose to do that as a Lions fan if we don't have any, or if our only pick is something like in the, the 50s or 60s ultimately. Or... The poor old recruiting staff. Oh, yeah. I just felt a bit sorry for them, but the rest of the staff <laughs> would be quite happy to go down there and have a night off, wouldn't they? <laughs> oh, you'd imagine so. You, you still have to show up, with, even if you've got no oh, picks, wouldn't you? I don't know. I don't know. It's an interesting one, yeah. <laughs> Maybe just head down to Paradise and get a have a, have a meal instead, something yeah. like that. <laughs> uh, until we next sit, though, this is the Brisbane Lions Fancast. We'll chat to you soon. Bye. Bye.